Hello everybody and welcome to the Mega Modded series. We are going to jump in once again, randomise that bad boy. Unfortunately we did lose our streak recently. Hey, Tainted Apollyon's a hella fun character with all the wackiness that we can go ahead with with this guy. Getting all the different wisp varieties and stuff. It's just, I don't know, it's just hella fun. Um, Box of Spiders? Wow, that might be the record for quickest crash. One moment. Okay, this time it let me open the sacks and didn't crash. It must have spawned a card that it's not allowed to spawn or something. I have no idea. Anyways, I think Box of Spiders is worth taking, especially considering if we get a new active later, we can swap it out and then um, and then abyss it. But yeah, we got a tower card here. Um, I'm going to try and utilize it here, but almost every time you do this, they all land in the dead center of the room. So it doesn't really... Oh, I just used abyss by accident. Whoops. Yeah, they always land dead center of the room. We did get the secret room, however, so it wasn't all bad. Good, good. I'm a bit annoyed I used a bisque because I might not be able to use it on my uh, on my boss room now, which would be a little upsetting, I'll be honest. It would be a little bit upsetting to uh, lose out on that ability. But so far, this floor, very good consumable gain. Do you know what? I'm feeling a little risky. Let's even go to the curse room. I might get an extra charge out of it, or I might just get some good items, or I might just get some spiders. Now, I at least got the extra charge. It might mean we get a chance to use Abyss on the boss, if we should like. We also got this. Slot machines um, may spawn... Machines may spawn slots when uh, broken. Beggars may spawn slots when paying out. Interesting. So does that mean any machine that breaks can spawn a slot machine? Which... Sounds, sounds intriguing. I wonder how high the chances are of that happening, though. Okay, thank God I didn't get hit by that. We'll check this out, as we always do. I think this is well worth it. There you go. There's a boy. And he shall be destroyed. The two keys. Um. Okay, now we're in a little bit of a spot. Right, first of all, let's just clear the rest of the floor. See what we end up getting. Because we might get uh, enough pennies naturally. If not, we shall um, find another way. These, I swear, these enemies are just the hardest on the first floor. Especially as a character like this or like Tainted Eve where you have very, very low fire rate. Especially when they set themselves on fire. Good of you to do that for, for us, sirs. My lord, my lord. But yeah, the spiders are going to be really good. I actually think that Box of Spiders is a little bit better than Guppy's head. Even though it's not every single room, I think you get a bit more value out of it. Okay, we got these fellas. These guys can be a little annoying, but the uh, the explosions they fire are pretty predictable and pretty slow moving. So for the first floor, they're not so bad. It's these guys that I find problematic. Okay, you need to calm down, sir. You're doing all sorts of kooky stuff, and I don't like it. We did manage to get a charge as well. Okay, just got to stay out the way of these, uh, these little fragile rocks here, because they will hurt us. So there's one penny. I'm sure we can get another penny somehow out of this. But yeah, this this trinket seems interesting. We know to get like beggars and stuff from destroying machines. Seems like an intriguing way of doing things. Um, second secret room is also a path to success for us here. I'm really hoping that we can just like destroy... Um, oh god, mm, that's a hard room. Uh, I hope we can just like destroy other fires and get it that way. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case, I'll be honest. Yeah, so let's uh, let's bomb here, see for second secret room. Unfortunately, we didn't get it. And then... This is going to be a bit of an... I think we got to try this boy. I know that he doesn't often drop... Um, yeah, I'm going to say he doesn't often drop money when he's bombed, but he had a, the, the pot at least had a chance. That's a bit of a shame. We don't have a sack room or anything here. If we miss out on this, I'm going to be mega sad. What I probably should have done in, in hindsight is just played the uh, bomb beggar, because they often pay out with money. Uh, that probably would have been the best the best way of doing it. Um, it's a little bit of a shame that we missed out on that, but it's not to say it's all over. We've got poops in this room. There's a there's like a ten percent chance that one of these could drop us a drop us a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Do you know this morning I had the I had the weirdest most stupidest dream. So I don't really have stress dreams that often, just because my life isn't all that stressful. Uh, which is I'm, I'm I'm blessed in that way. That's it's very very nice that I don't have a super stressful life. My job 
can be stressful, but it's not always. Um, and yeah, um, so I don't get stress dreams very often. But I had one the other day, and it was it was like the classic stress dream trope where, I don't know if you guys have ever had this, but it's a very, very common and very well-known stress dream where you lose your teeth, like your teeth fall out. And it is a, if you've ever had that dream you don't know what it's about, it's an indication that you are too stressed. It's always what it's an indication of. But anyways, I had that dream. Haven't had one in a real long time. So I was a bit like, okay, where the hell did that come from? And then I remember what I was dreaming about prior. Do you want to know? what I was dreaming about prior. Also, I'm really upset that we're not going to be able to get um, this item. Hmm. I don't think there's any way we can get it. We've, we've, we've exhausted, exhausted all of our options. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. So you're saying there's a chance. But yeah, do you want to know what it was? I thought that I'd accidentally uploaded two Isaac episodes in my fucking dream. In my dream, I thought I'd uploaded um, two Isaac episodes in one day by accident. That was enough to apparently stress me out to the point of having a stress dream. What? That's like the most minor, inconvenient amount of stress I've ever heard. Oh, there's fires in here too. We could get a, we could get a little penny penny out of these. Eh. Do I? The thing is, do I give this guy my single bomb in the hopes that he pays out? Or do I go and destroy the pot in the other room in the hopes that that pays out? I think we're more likely to get success from destroying the pot, even though it's only a single pot. Damn it. Anyways, we tried. We tried. Let's go to the next floor. That is a shame. That's a real shame. But yeah, like, I, I woke up and I was kind of like... Oh, damn, I just had a stress dream. And I was kind of thinking to myself, what the hell was that about then? And then I realized and was like, brain, brain, that's not stress. You realize that, right? Oh, we got a planetarium on a 1% chance. Hell yes. And I was like, yeah, what are you doing, brain? That's not real stress. Sh <laughs> shoot your face. <laughs> Stop un undermining actual stress. Okay. 50% damage up. Tears become extremely small. Tears become spectral and slightly transparent. Tears will split into 4 to 12 more tears. That sounds very awesome. Also, apparently this guy should allow me to pay into him for 5 cent a pop. Just straight up doesn't work. I don't know what's going on with those guys, but apparently they're like beggars that allow you to, um, that allow you to get extra planetarium items, which sounds really overpowered, by the way. But that's apparently what they're meant to do, and... For me, they just don't. Also, this seems really, really, really strong. Like, the fact that we got a damage up with this. Also, scratch cards are fixed now, so we can use that and get a fly. Nice. Um, ooh, Fruity Plum. I actually, I'm actually going to abyss Fruity Plum because it creates the cutest little fella you've ever seen in your life. Just normal Fruity Plum, but in um, in in uh, locust form, which I like the idea of. Yeah, this is going to be a kind of laggy run. <laughs> I'm already seeing some pretty major FPS drops from this single item. So, get on board for that. What do we see in our shop? There was some good stuff in there, wasn't there? We had the uh, ability to get... I do kind of want Mum's Box. I think Mum's Box is very, very good. Um, but at the same time, I would like to abyss... I'd like to abyss our box of spiders. So let's see if we can achieve that, which doesn't look likely, actually. Calm down, you. Purple pill. Oh, ho, 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 you can't be fucking... Oh, no. you got to be kidding me. The slowest tears on the planet. I kind of need the box of spiders, actually, with this lower tears. I kind of need them. Okay, we're doing good against this guy. When he starts jumping, though, we're going to have a problem because our tier rate is so unbelievably low. Okay. We got him. We got our devil deal. We, um... I'm not sure what to do here. We're always, like, one off. We're one penny off. Now we're one charge off. It's just like, can the game chill out for a minute?
Okay, this did give us enemies, which means that we do get a charge, which is good. Um, turns the room gold, uh, freezes or strengthens enemies. See, that's also an interesting active, and I know that this one, unfortunately, will just, um... It does give us some fool's gold rocks here and there. I don't really think it's it, though. I think we abyss this, and we get a bunch of flyboys, and then we go back through, and we grab Mum's box. Amplifies or changes books activation effects or makes them charge faster. Apart from natural spawn, this trinket has a 33% chance. Okay, so that's kind of interesting, but doesn't really do anything for us right now. Good stuff. Not that... To be fair, we're not going to carry any books. I was going to say we, can, we might as well hold it, but we might as well not. So we're not going to be getting any books. The turn the room gold thing is pretty good, but I want to lean into um, Tainted Apollyon here and really uh, really try and get some good stuff going with him. We dross in it again. Yeah, this is very strong, even with this low tier rate. If we get up to a high... Oh my god, that was a mistake and a half right there. Uh, if we get up to a high tier rate, this is going to get pretty crazy. At least the low tier rate means less lag for now. Yeah, the fact that it gives us Spectral as well, it's pretty nuts. A good Planetarium item in my eyes. Very good indeed. The, the, the fact that it comes with a plus 50% damage up is kind of crazy as well. Nice. Just keep making our way downtown. So many of these just aren't dying sometimes. These guys are healthy. Our flies will, will do a good job though. I owe you no thank you. We're looking for something that has a nice doubled effect. Which is actually most of the vanilla trinkets. Most of the modded ones don't have doubled effects, unfortunately. Which would be nice to see. Be a nice addition. I know some of them do, but not all of them. Really. The small tears is making it significantly harder to actually hit the enemy I'm trying to aim at. I will say that. The little small boy tears. I could try and abuse this dude to get that, um, that them few fool's gold rocks, but I'm just going to try and come back to them when I have the bombs. Good, good. There's so much on screen already. This is a, a rather messy run. Ooh, Libra? I'd, Libra's basically always bad. Let's, um, let's just abyss it and see what we get. We get two halves of a fly. I gotta say, it's, it's one of those items that I feel like is almost always a net negative. Unless you have very specific items, which is very rare. Another really hard room. Honestly, I do not... I'm not sure what room pack it's from, but I'm, I am I don't think I like the theming of these little yellow spiders on this floor. Mainly because the little yellow spiders can fuck off. And I, <laughs> they're just horrible to fight. So don't put them on any extra floors that they don't have to be on. Um, yeah, we'll take that. It's pretty good. We'll buy a soul heart right now. Yeah, Chewy Pen should be kind of decent. Double, it doubles the chance as well for us uh, getting it to proc. Yeah, pretty much nothing I could do against that. Okay, I think I managed to get him to eat the bomb. No, I didn't, but he did take significant damage from it. Calm down, you snaky boy. Don't want much to do with you. Okay. There you go. Once we get the damage going, once we get it rolling, it does a good job. Just getting it there. This is fire rate, 100%. Yes, thank you. We needed that desperately. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, keep on going down to the next floor. So far, in just the four items we've got, though, we've created a, rel a relatively stable build here. Yeah, in the last episode, I was talking about a lot about... Oh my god, that's some good stuff. I want some flight now. Uh, I was talking a lot about uh, like TV shows and like binge-watching things. And in the same vein, I kind of want to carry on that conversation somewhat. Oh, right. Is that... 
affected because we've got... That's interesting. Um, it actually shows us the affected chance because we have uh, the doubled effect from Mom's box. That's cool. Um, whoopsie. Increased knockback, I don't think so. Why are all my chests these chests? This isn't correct. Prayer card? This is odd. Is there some- has something gone wrong? Because the, these should not be the chests we're seeing right now. These are item chests from Ipecac. Um, But yeah, in the same vein of that, I kind of want to just talk about like, one of the sort of- I wouldn't say it's a huge trend, but one of the big things on YouTube that has a lot of stigma around it, like a lot of stigmatism around it, um, is uh, something that I have actually uh, watched and consumed for a very long time since I was like- Probably like 13 or 14 when I was quite young. Uh, bear in mind, I'm like 24 now. So like basically like 10 years at least. It's uh, ASMR. Like I, I feel like ASMR has a, I wouldn't say it has a bad name, but it has a lot of negative connotations surrounding it from people that, that don't know much about it. From And obviously the, the main one is literally everyone just immediately assumes it's sexual because it's, some, it's someone whispering. Which I I genuinely hate. <laughs> it's it's something that like it's basically it's like it's like literally everything that exists. Yes, there is sexual parts to it, but most of it isn't sexual at all. Like there are some creators out there, a very very limited few, that do make it in with some sort of sexual part to it, some sort of like they'll dress up slutty, or they'll, they'll do some sensual whispering. But that's the same as anything. There's Marvel films, and people have drawn fucking porn of them shagging each other. It exists in literally every single facet of the internet. There's always... There's always versions of basically every hobby, every interest, everything, where the someone has sexualized it for whatever demented reason. Anyways. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the things that I feel like oh, it's, a, it's a reason a lot of people don't try it. A lot of people haven't really, um, haven't really experienced it. Another thing is just that it seems weird. Like, it, it seems like sort of uncom uncomfortable for someone to be whispering in your ear really close sort of thing. And it's not always whispering, but like that's kind of the main thing people associate with it. And yeah, I feel like, ooh, Brainworm. I think, I think with, with that setup, Brainworm's going to be kind of insane. Um... I don't know if it works in the split tiers, but let's uh, imagine it does. Um, but yeah, I think I think that like with a lot of people, they think oh, it's going to be really weird or, or really strange and uncomfortable. But I I genuinely think kind of annoying to get two cards. Okay, that's a much better payout. Um, I genuinely think more people should should at least try it because I've um. I've, I've, like, listened to ASMR. I basically, I, I sort of found out about it by accident. I, I think my very first sort of real experience with actual ASMR, like, uh, there's a lot of people out there that have had, like, the experiences where they've watched something like Bob Ross and they've experienced it through his, like, sort of calming turn and his painting. Um, but, like, on top of that, I can't actually remember what the very first instance of of like random sort of natural ASMR in like a film, TV or movie, whatever. Um, but I remember the very first actual instance of me understanding what that feeling was, was um, from a British game show, like TV show. I can't even remember what it, which one it was now. It was like a panel show. And um, they were, nah, they were talking about, um, ooh, car battery, yes please. They were talking about, um, like, what's, what's something, I think, basically, it seemed like the idea of the show was just asking people weird questions, asking people weird or uncomfortable questions, and someone said, like, what's something, like, that you enjoy that everyone would think you were weird for enjoying, and one of the, one of the people answered, I really enjoy watching people fold towels, like, I enjoy the sounds of it and the, and, and the visuals of it, and so they, they like, got, they, they, they got someone to come out and start folding towels in front of him. Um, and obviously everyone was like, that's weird, what the hell? <laughs> but I was like, yeah, that is pretty weird, what the hell? And then they started folding the towels and I was like, oh, oh, I understand. <laughs> and it's like, 
it's one of those things where um, it's it's very hard to describe the feeling of ASMR, mainly because many people experience it experience it in different ways, but also because basically one of the one of the sort of words that's used in the ASMR community um, to sort of describe the way that it feels is called tingles, but because it's called tingles. That's one of the other reasons people assume it's something sexual, because they hear the word tingles and they think of, like, one of one of the, another one of the things that this is sort of joint to that, another one of the things that in the earlier days of ASMR that it kind of got, when it adopted the name, um, ooh, that's pretty insane, um, it kind of, when it kind of adopted the name, a few people would call it head, uh, like, I think it was called, like, head-induced orgasms or something like that, and obviously, because the word orgasm was in it, everyone also assumed it was sexual. That has since been, a, 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 like, a description that no one really uses anymore because of the connotations that it, uh, that it, that, that it provides, but, like... I think partly because of that, a lot of people sort of hear about it or see it and think, "Oh no, no, that's creepy. That's weird." But if you're if you're someone that suffers with um, anxiety or um, or depression or finds it really hard to sleep, like you have insomnia, or uh, or you're just someone that finds it really hard to focus. I would very highly recommend it. It's very good. 20% chance to kill an enemy with the highest HP when entering a room. Ooh, we can up that to 40% here. I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. I find I find it very interesting. But like, a few things I've got to got to sort of say with um with ASMR is for one, it has literally the best community on YouTube or any other platform that I've ever seen. I. I challenge people to find a better community. Honestly, there isn't. Like, of course, there's still going to be the tiny subset of people that are weird about it. But people that are actually parts of, like, active members of the community, everyone's just so fucking nice. Because the whole premise of ASMR is going onto YouTube or whatever other platform to relax. Um, it's, it's very much like a relaxation club. Like, every single person is there to get to sleep or to chill out or to de-stress and it's just oh my god i'm getting hit a lot right now um and it just means it's just like the collective of like the kindest people on the internet like i i cannot remember a time in which i've seen a negative comment on an asmr video it it just it very rarely happens like, most of the community is very, very nice. And then, because it's a slight... I wouldn't say it's a niche. It's very big. But because it's a slightly niche community, at least, because it's not like everyone's adopted into it, um, it means that you don't really get pointless haters. It means that you don't really get people that are pointlessly hating on it for no reason. Um, so everyone that's there kind of wants to be there. Um, and it means that, like, it, it just provides a really nice community. And, like, I know there's other communities that are really good out there, but honestly, I think ASMR is one of the best. There's also just, like, running gags of inside jokes and stuff that you see in, like, all the comment sections, which is really funny. Um, like, if you've been following it for a... Um, if you've been following it for a, a decent amount of time, you sort of pick up on these... All these different jokes and, in, like, inside things from different videos. Um, but any, any, anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of come back to that. I'll get back to sort of the the tingle feeling thing. Because that's I think that's one of the things that people have the, the biggest sort of gripe about. And it is it is actually part of ASMR that's, um, that's, that works for some people and not others. Essentially, it, it is, it's when you hear a, a certain sound or someone's voice and it triggers a sort of feeling in the back of your head... Or, or like down your spine that it, it kind of gives you the shivers a little bit but in, in a really sort of relaxing and nice way um, and it really helps you to um, to sort of chill out and de-stress um, and I think that that's sort of the the bit that's that for a long time for the first like good few years of it being on YouTube it was very hard for people to describe without it sounding sexual because it's like oh I get a tingly feeling in the back of my head and down my spine and immediately people are like oh so you've came <laughs> Oh, so I see. <laughs> and it's like, it's just, it's very hard to describe. And like, I kind of got, oh God. Like I said, I, I kind of got into it about 10 years ago now on YouTube. Um, I lost my devil deal there, shit. Um, yeah, I'll take that. Shot speed could be pretty good for us here. Um, yeah, I kind of got into it quite, quite a while ago. And that was kind of like just a year or two after it started to 
start growing on YouTube. It was still pretty small at that time. Um, and and I wouldn't, like, obviously I'm not, like, an early adopter or anything because I didn't actually do any of it myself. But, um, I, I like, it started off pretty, like, basic and primitive. Like, people just emulating natural versions of of ASMR, like Bob Ross and things. Like, Bob Ross is probably one of the, pro probably one of the most well-known to people in and outside of ASMR that, that know, like, the relaxing effect his voice had. But if you've ever had it where, like, you're listening to a sound and you're, like, you're, like, on your phone in bed or you're, like, just watching something on Reddit or whatever and you have that really relaxing feeling from a sound, that's what ASMR is. And a lot of people don't seem to realise that. And I, I, I think... I think it's an underutilized resource. <laughs> um, spawn an extra boss. Ooh. That sounds good. Um, I, th I think it's like an under underutilized thing for people that have like anxiety and uh, depression and things like that. I do think like, obviously a doctor can't prescribe it, but I do think a doctor should definitely recommend it. If you can get past the weirdness, which I, I admit getting past the weirdness of it does take a little bit of doing. Um, but once you get past that, you can start to then, like, find your creators, find people that, that, um, that, that trigger it for you. I mean, first of all, you've got to kind of figure out what it is that triggers it for you. Uh, some, some people, like I said, just, it just doesn't work for them. And they're normally the people that find it the weirdest because they've never experienced the feeling before. But most people can. Um, but yeah, so you've just got to kind of find the right creator that, that, like... There's, there's, like, literally thousands of ASMR creators out there, and they all do... I mean, a lot of them do similar things, but also a lot of them have unique unique things about them, unique triggers that they do and stuff. Um, and that's an, this is another thing that's kind of got a bit of a stigma, a stigmatism around it, around ASMR, is that, oh, it's just women with big boobies doing it. it it's really not. Like, um, th three, of the, um, three of the most prominent creators that I listen to are male. <laughs> And it's just because they're really fucking good at it. There's a guy called Raffy Taffy. And my god, he is just like the king. <laughs> he's so good at it. I don't know what it is about him, but like he's got like a really sort of nice relaxing voice. And, and another thing as well a lot of them do is like medical stuff. Do you know like when you go for like an eye exam or a, or a checkup and it's... God damn it, I'm playing like ass. Um, and it's, it's really relaxing to have that done. I think this is Curse of Darkness to be honest. Um... A lot of them try and emulate that, um, and a lot of them do it very, very well. Uh, like, eye exam ones are very, very big, but even just weird stuff, like, like when when you sort of get into it, and I'm talking about this a lot, by the way, but it's just something I'm somewhat passionate about, so I'm going to talk about it, <laughs> and you'll get to listen. Um, but, uh, like, one of the, one of the sort of things about it is sort of when you get, when you get more into it, um... It's it. This sounds it sounds like a whole a whole load of bullshit. What I'm about to say, but it's not. Um, when you sort of get deeper into it, you start to become more and more like immune or resilient to certain triggers. Like for example, if you start out and you really like tapping, you really like people tapping on things. That's one. That's one of the big triggers out there. That's one of the ones that really gets you going. <laughs> not gets you going, but you know what I mean. It really it really trigger uh, triggers the ASMR feeling, and it's it's one of the ones that um that works for you best. You may find that after, even, even if you're watching different videos and different creators, uh, rather than just going back to the same one, you may find that after a few months, that trigger doesn't really work the same as it used to. And it's, it's usually because it becomes predictable. And a lot of the, a lot of the, um, at least for me, a lot of the uh, sort of trigger parts of it come from the unpredictability and, um, oh, for God's sake, Crimson Chest. Um, they come from sort of the unpredictability of it, um, and the anticipation of, of what's about to happen. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. What, what's this? Blocks 100% of incoming damage. Every time damage is taken, the chance is decreased until zero is reached. Okay, that's kind of an interesting trinket. I'm going to take this into the boss fight, though. Although, I have to say, bringing it into this boss fight, probably not my best idea. I, I, I gotta say, this one's kind of trash. Like, this, um... This little thingy we've got going on with our, um, planetarium item's pretty awesome. But other than that, like, I'm struggling to really see the, the merit of this run. We're really having a hard time dealing damage. It's mainly because my tears fucking suck. 
1.88 still? Are you kidding me? It's offensive. It's generally offensive. I, I meant to say genuinely, but I said generally. Both. Uh, but yeah, that kind of comes on sort of the next sort of big aspect of it. Oh my god, I'm getting hit so much. Um, kind of falls onto the next pretty big aspect of it, which is um, there's a there's a rather large community and, and one that I kind of like that um, that is unintentional, where people aren't specifically creating ASMR for the ASMR effect. It's just people such as Bob Ross that just have that sort of voice or that quality about them or the actions that they do that make it um that, that make it really relaxing and that's that's quite a I wouldn't say it's a sought after thing but that's something that like a lot of creators um a lot of well a lot of viewers more than creators oh my god uh, I'm sorry but I need to go and rant in the uh Ipecac discord Who the hell made these Skolex, these baby Skolex enemies? Please tell me who hurt you. God damn it, they're just the worst. <laughs> No one needed more Skolex. Okay, we're, we're sort of in a position now where I'm probably going to die pretty soon. <laughs> like, this has been a pretty trash run. Um, I've not really gained anything from this run. apart, Like, basically apart from my planetary mate, and this has all been trash. Like, even my wisps, my flies, my locusts, whatever you want to call them, aren't really doing much to help. They do good damage, but not good enough. I'm trying my best here. I'm trying my best. I, I basically I need health and a really really good tears up. If it, if that doesn't happen soon, we're gonna have a hard time. We are going to have a hard time. But yeah, like un unintended ASMR is a very big thing, which is sort of where like the medical side of it comes in because a lot of uh, people's first ASMR experiences are with like doctors or like eye exams, things like that, um, and then. People try and find videos online of people doing eye exams and stuff that, that are sort of part of that trigger. Sales people's a big one. People that like have really soothing voices that are like selling a product is, is a big one. One of the things that I find that, that for me is like quite a big one, which by the way, I don't actually believe any of this. And if any of you out there do, good for you, but I don't. Um, the is uh, is chakra and like reiki which are two things that i i just i understand them now because i've watched enough content on them to understand them i will never ever believe them because i just i don't see how you could but some people do and fair be it to them to do so but the one thing i'll say is people talking bullshit is very relaxing <laughs> And I, 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 do, I think it's because, like, Reiki and Chakra and all that sort of stuff, they're very um, spiritual and, and they're meant to be somewhat relaxing for whoever's taking part in it or the salespeople or whatever. So that means it leads to them just being inherently quite relaxing. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that's, like, a big thing. That, like, uh, sort of one of the ones that I kind of seek out relatively often when I'm going to watch it. People that are doing like Reiki healing or chakra or stuff. I don't believe any of it, but it's just genuinely some of the most relaxing content you can find. Like, um, I, don't, I don't know what it is about it. It's really hard to describe. And I probably sound like an absolute flaming weirdo right now to a lot of you. I'm sure I do, but I don't give a damn. It's something I, I, I really enjoy and it's something I think more people should give a chance I think, I think too many people disregard it as this weird thing on the internet that no one should try and that's deeply sexual, but it's just not. Oh, God damn it! I'm so dead. Also, why didn't my ring work? Why is there not two bosses? I did get two items, though. Um, Neither of these items are going to help me. Ooh, that's pretty interesting. Um... <laughs> it didn't increase my stats at all because I've not had a single stat up. 
You pleb. I'm just going to take them both as flies. Why not? God damn it. <laughs> I've literally not had a single stat up technically. My lord. I can't believe it. Right. We know that we're on one and a half hearts right now. Basically, we know that we're dead right now. Good. We just keep pushing forward. We just keep going. Oh. I hate rooms like this. These rooms, whatever pack this room's from, needs to go. They do not work. I get what you were trying to do, but they just don't work. I think they're from rooms galore. But yeah, they, they, they unfortunately just do not work the way that you clearly intended for them to. Oh no. Oh no. Half a heart. Half a heart and a dream. Let's go, big boy. Oh, that was a very terrible bomb placement. Okay, we got you. I see you there, Dominic. Can you save me? It'd be so funny if I accidentally walked into it and it killed me there. That'd be quite funny. You cannot save me. Good. Um, I'm going to take this. And I'm going to bomb both of your fires. Damn it. Right. Oh, God, this is the room where we die. 100% the room that we die in. Okay, we kind of need to kill that big boy so that he uh, uses the death card in everyone. It's just too much going on. There you go. Well, that was a terrible run. God damn, that's like probably the worst run I've had in a while. Anyways, I got to talk a lot, which is always fun. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.